Okay, how many of you use maps in Tableau today? Nice, great, great showing. Um, so my name is Hannah Judge, and I am a technical account manager at Mapbox. And I get to talk today about one of my favorite things, lucky me, which is maps. So I studied geography. I have always been obsessed with maps. Um, when I was younger, I was really into using maps to navigate. I would use like a compass and a paper map and find my way back to my favorite fort or like around my favorite hiking trails. Um, and then my obsession with maps shifted to planning. So I spent a couple years helping small community health organizations gather road and demographic data in remote regions of Liberia and Peru and Rwanda um, we, to help inform the site selection for new health facilities. So we would get on the ground, train local data collectors in using GPSs and Android phones and actually collect roads and communities ride around on motorcycles and often walking when we couldn't ride on motorcycles. And now I am immersed in the Mapbox world, uh, helping my customers think about what does it mean that we live in this geolocated world, right? We are increasingly surrounded by uh, so many sensors that are pinging other sensors, finding out where we are, telling us where to go, how to get there, and who or what is uh, surrounding us. And maps are a great way to help us tell all of these stories and answer the question, why things happen where they happen, right? And Tableau is the perfect tool to help people tell stories with data, and maps are really a super key component of, of telling those stories. So today, I am going to tell you about how you can take advantage of more location data in Tableau to build better maps, better dashboards, and ultimately have more impact. So here's what we're gonna look at. I'm gonna talk about three, I'm gonna give you a little introduction to Mapbox, and then we're gonna talk about three of my favorite Tableau mapping features, and then three ways to extend the location capabilities inside of Tableau using Mapbox. My hope is that by the end of this session, you are inspired to go make a new, very cool map in Tableau, and that you tweet it at me so I can be excited about it as well. Uh, note that we're going to take questions at the end so you can save your questions for them. Okay, so what is Mapbox? We are a location, data, and navigation platform. And we build open source tools, maps, search directions, uh, that help our customers make the most out of their location data. And we like to think about our tools as these building blocks, right? These Legos that you can fit together in whatever combination you need to build out an application that helps you answer your most complex location questions. And we power the maps for companies like the Weather Channel, right? They use maps in their mobile applications to help keep their users informed about daily and also severe weather, making sure people get those alerts about, you know, there's a hurricane headed towards you, you're in an evacuation zone. Uh, we also power maps for groups like the New York Times. Uh, visualizing election data and helping them tell all kinds of stories. And now we also power the maps for Tableau, who are using our maps in all of their products. So we don't have an app of our own, but we help power other people's applications, um, which means that there are over 640 million monthly active users touching our maps every month. And because of this, we're getting about 9 million, 9 billion um, miles of new anonymized location data every month. So what do we do with that data? Uh, we like to talk about our maps as a living map. So developers build with our tools, they share their app with their users, we get anonymized location data back, none of which I should emphasize is uh, able to be tied to any sort of personal information. Um, it's all about the map and making it better. So where is there heavy traffic right now? Um, where is there a new left turn restriction or a one way street? But I know this audience primarily cares about data, so I want to highlight two unique things about the Mapbox platform that should resonate with you because they both have to do with layers. So first, layer orders are important because they give you design flexibility. You think about with other maps, you're often placing your data on top, right? So say you're making a Choropleth map showing population by neighborhood. 
you don't want to just put your data on top of the map because then you might not be able to see the labels and even tell like what neighborhood am I even looking at. With Mapbox, you can slot your data in between the layers, so you have like the geographic context, maybe the streets um, underneath the data, but the state borders and city names on top of them. Uh, this is a snapshot from the weather company's storm radar app. It's really important that the labels sit on top in this situation, right? This is showing a massive hurricane. Um, and you want to be able to see like what places are in the storm's path, what time does the storm hit the coastline, um, help with those types of questions. The second data thing is um, there's lots of data baked into the Mapbox layers themselves, right? And this provides an enormous amount of uh, information on its own, helping you answer all types of different questions, whether you're in the auto space, business intelligence, energy, real estate, you name it. We have 3D buildings, we have HD map data that can be used to help power autonomous driving information, points of interest, traffic signs, terrain data, all the way down to the base map. And when you're building with Mapbox, you can pick and choose exactly which types of data you actually want to pull onto your map. And now you can do that in Tableau. So as of 2019.2, you can access Mapbox vector maps directly in Tableau. So before this release, the maps were using uh, raster tiles. And with raster tiles, when you load a new map, you sometimes get that gridding effect where like the individual tiles are loading in. Whereas with vector, um, the maps are super fast, they're very smooth, um, they're much sharper, and they give excellent performance. So if you're loading a ton of data, um, they're not slowing you down. And these maps are powered by Mapbox. So we worked with the Tableau Maps team to help launch these fresh new default styles for all users. Um, and it's been really cool to watch what the community has built in light of this integration. So I'm gonna highlight three of my favorite things about the new maps. Satellite maps, administrative data, and layer toggling. So up first, satellite maps. In 1997, over half of the countries in Africa were affected by conflict, resulting in nearly a million deaths, massive displacement, and major economic costs which affected the development of multiple countries for years to come. So the Armed Conflicts Location and Event Data Group um, ACLED, which they are actually here at this conference. Um, they collect data about right, the dates, agents, location, impact of um, all of these different events. Uh, just all of the reported political violence and protests around Africa. So this is a dashboard from Johnny Walker, uh, which illustrates where the conflict occurred on the African continent over this 20 year period using the ACLED data. And it's a cool way, right? Like the maps are helping paint this puck picture of fluctuations over time um, and highlight the different hotspots. But there's no countries on the map, which means that your eyes really drawn to like, what are the regional trends? It's not specifically highlighting these individual countries, but the imagery really helps give you some of that context um, for like what the, what the data is showing. So imagine if we didn't have this imagery, there might be this large black spot in the middle. Um, but in reality, that's a desert area which is far less populated. So if you're a researcher analyzing trends in political violence and trying to understand how does that connect to GDP over time, this is a super valuable way of contextualizing your data and focusing in on the areas that matter most. So I'm gonna show you two other things you can do in Mapbox Studio if you want to customize the imagery even more. So a quick note, Mapbox Studio is our Mapbox's map editing tool. Um, it's free to sign up for an account and it gives you this awesome layer-based um, like portal where you can customize your own maps and bring them into Tableau. Okay, so I live in San Francisco. Um, wildfires are increasingly on my mind in California. So here we're looking at wildfire data over a 24 hour period. And I can see these little red dots, but they're not super visible, right? And I'm not thrilled about making them larger because I think that will look bad. Um, but I can go into Mapbox Studio and actually adjust the opacity of the satellite layer to help those points really pop and make the, the red dots show up um, much more clearly. 
Um, this is a good technique to use when you want to use satellite data, but you want to incorporate it in a more subtle way. And another subtle technique that I like to use with satellite data is what I call a satellite fade. So if I work for a real estate company, I want to show my clients exactly what the neighborhood that they're looking at moving into looks like, but I don't only want to show the satellite imagery, right? Like I want to start by giving them that high level context of um, the neighborhood with this traditional streets view. But what I can do is set the imagery layer to fade in. So once we get down to that certain zoom level, um, I get the context I want when I actually want it. And to start using satellite imagery in Tableau, you can just head to the maps layer menu option and select satellite from the drop down menu of background map style. So it's already there for you to start using. Okay, my second favorite feature, boundaries and administrative data. Guys in St. Thomas's Charity is an NGO in the UK that is working to tackle urban health issues like childhood obesity. And Rob Parker is their head of data and analytics. And he has this great story in one of these um, recently published Tableau um, case study articles um, where he's being asked by his CEO, like, where should we start this work? Um, they want to visualize their data, identify areas with high obesity prevalence, and then confirm right, that those areas with the highest need are the places where they're actually funneling the majority of their funds, um, so they're having maximum impact. So you can see here, they've used Tableau and joined their data um, to those neighborhoods. Those are the red polygons that you're seeing. And they can then place extra data on top of the map to help give the context. These are potential partners that we can work with um, in these particular neighborhoods. Uh, so Mapbox is providing the underlying updated boundaries information, uh, administrative, postal, and statistical boundaries directly to Tableau. So you can join your own data to even more administrative areas like this. So countries, states, counties, regions, you name it, and visualize it. And if you want to get really fancy, you can. So hex bins are a great data visualization technique, a cool way of showing like general themes over a geography. And one of the reasons they're cool, right? They're less granular than a dot density map and they're not constrained by boundaries as is the case with core plot maps. So temperature data is a great use case, right? Weather is not affected by politics. It doesn't care about administrative boundaries. Uh, so if I'm doing climate research and I wanna hone in on like, what are the particular geographies with an average temperature above a certain threshold, you can make a map like this to define that region. So Alan Walker, map maker extraordinaire, made this uh, glorious map showing global monthly mean temperatures in 2013. So he used QGIS, which is an open source free geographic information system to create the hexagon grid. He then intersected that with the Mapbox boundaries and kicked off a magic making process where he basically processed and exported uh, those intersections as raster files used Alteryx to do some spatial matching, ran a summarize function, a union function, and then applied quantiles in QGIS before bringing it all back into Tableau. Um, a lengthy explanation, I know. There is more information on his Twitter if you're excited about making a map like this. But to start using the boundaries yourself, you don't actually have to change anything in Tableau. Uh, if you made a map in Tableau today and opted to visualize your data by the state, or by the country, um, you're using those boundaries. So the reason I'm telling you about them is if you're not seeing particular data that you want included, let us or the Tableau Maps team know because we're always looking to make sure that we're providing you with the information you need. Okay, final Tableau feature, layer toggling. So going back to my fire data, I'm using the light style here and showing the location of fires over the past 24 hours. So say that I run a shipping company, I'm delivering produce to different grocery stores in California, and I want to know how the fires might affect my operations. So I see that there's been some fire activity north of San Francisco, and there's not a lot of context on the map. So what I can do is open up the map layers and actually select the layers that give me the context that I need, right? Terrain, streets, points of interest, uh, city labels. 
and you can then toggle back and forth between the different styles that exist in Tableau and explore like what are all of the layers that exist in those styles without ever having to leave the platform. So previously you could do this, but it would require you to like go to Mapbox Studio, update your style, come back to Tableau, see how that looked. This gives you a lot more flexibility in directly in Tableau. Um, and again, you don't have to change anything to use this. Just start using one of the latest versions and you will see it. So those are a few of my favorite Tableau features. Um, at Mapbox, we're constantly thinking about how can we reduce friction for Tableau users looking to do cool things with location data and maps and sort of smooth out any rough edges that exist within Tableau. So I'm going to highlight three things in this section. Offline maps, geocoding, also known as search, and isochrones. OK, if you work for a government or a bank or hospital and firewalls and HIPAA are a part of your day-to-day -day operations, you can hook Mapbox Atlas up and get access to all of your maps and all of your data offline without losing any detail or functionality. So up until 2019.2, you actually couldn't do any offline mapping in Tableau full stop. With Mapbox, you now have the option to extend what Tableau offers out of the box by hooking up Mapbox Atlas. So let me show you what this looks like. OK, this is a standard Tableau dashboard using Superstore. We're going to plot data by state, pan around, zoom, turn a couple layers on and off, like I was just showing you all. So things are working. We are getting data. It looks good. All right, now to simulate, I just turned the Wi-Fi off to simulate being in one of those firewall uh, environments. And we can see like the map stays. Tableau is very good at caching the information that you've already loaded in. Um, but as we zoom around, like we just went to Germany, we're not really getting any more of that data loading in um, any of the roads or the town names. And if we're trying to add in some more of these layers or change the style, you can't do it. Um, it looks it's even like hanging here a little bit um, while we're trying to make some adjustments. So now we're going to use Atlas to try and fix this. OK, cool. So like some of the styling comes in, but it's not actually, again, there's like no more data that's being loaded in. Um, so we go up and click Atlas. And boom, we get the same area. Immediately, we're seeing more data as you're zooming in. It's pulling in. And remember, the Wi-Fi is turned off. Like, we're not connected to any sort of internet. So this, what this is doing is pulling all of the information from Atlas, like same great experience that you expect in Tableau, but completely offline um, in this like boxed off environment. So unlike the previous examples, this is not a feature that is available um, in Tableau out of the box, but it's actually showing an environment that's already been hooked up to the Mapbox Atlas infrastructure. And to make that process even easier, we are very excited um, launching a new integration that we're calling Tab Atlas. So with the same information that you need to add a custom style to the map in Tableau today, you can make Atlas the default for all of your mapping needs. It's available on GitHub now. We'll walk you through the process of what it looks like to integrate and we're really excited to be able to offer this alongside the Tableau Maps team. Feels like this has been a long time coming and uh, just sort of, again, like smoothing out the path to make this a uh, plug and play solution for folks so you don't have to worry about being able to operate in these environments is, um, we're excited. So if, you're, if this speaks to you, um, come talk to me or one of my coworkers uh, after this talk or come to the booth and we'll hook you up with a link to the code and a free trial. All right, second Mapbox tool, geocoding. So every time that you are in an app and you're searching for an address, whether that is Zillow or Lyft, um, the weather app, DoorDash, you drop a pin on the map, um, you're making a, what's called a forward geocoding request. So here, here we're showing, we're in Las Vegas, I wanna see where in the city this conference center is. I search for Mandalay Bay. 
or if I'm lost in said behemoth comfort center and using an app like Yelp to try and find some good food around me, I have like no idea what my address is right now. Um, so I can select my current location um, and that will make a reverse geocode that's based on my current latitude and longitude. And Tableau is really good at using nearly every geographic data format, but what if I have a long list of addresses, right? I have the address um, of all my retail stores, but I don't have the latitude and longitude for each. And I want to display those store locations on a map in Tableau, not like number of stores by county or zip code, but like the actual store points. But when I upload them, there's not actually enough information in the address data to be able to do that plotting. Geocoding is the process that helps convert that um, information to a plottable point that you can actually put on the map. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you next is how to do this, um, geocoding directly in Tableau Prep using TabPy. For those of you who are not familiar with TabPy, so it's an open source solution built by Tableau that allows uh, desktop and prep users to run Python code inside uh oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, you can run Python code using your data and return those results back to your application. And we've built it in Docker. If you've never written Python code before, remain calm. Chris Toomey did it for you. Uh, so we were inspired. One of the cool things about TabPy is how it enables anyone to leverage the functionality of code that's been pre-written without actually having to write it yourself. So you can literally copy the script, paste it in, and it'll go ahead and call your function. So. Okay, buckle up. This is the most technical part of this presentation. It's 90 seconds. It's great. Um, shows how this thing is actually possible end to end, right? So I have two addresses, which are the two Mapbox offices. I don't know where they are, I just have the, the addresses. I wanna put them on the map. So first step, we have to actually build out TabPy. And this takes a couple minutes, um, but it's the key step to making this simple, because it's basically going back and referencing all the code under the hood that we've set up for you. So we head into prep. What I'm doing here is grabbing the data that we wanna geocode, those two addresses. And then we're gonna add a script and connect to the TabPy server that we just built. So here we're connecting. We're gonna select this simple geocoding script. So this is where you can see those three lines of code that I mentioned, you keep track of those. Um, we're gonna do a forward geocode. So we'll select this. And now, we have to include our Mapbox access token. So this is how you actually make a request to the Mapbox API. Um, and you get a token when you sign up for a Mapbox Studio account, which is a free process. So come in here, again, like all of this code is pre-populated -pre for you. And it just has a field where we're gonna go in, copy the token from our Studio account, paste it into this environment. And then we're gonna pick our function which in this case is called PrepGeo. And voila. So here we have these addresses and now we actually have the latitude and longitude that have been generated for those addresses that we passed into Prep. Um, so if you're sitting here thinking like, okay, that's great, two addresses. I have 10,000 addresses or 100,000 addresses. Uh, we have a thing for that as well. So we built a deployment script in partnership with some folks. So if you are interested in doing this process at scale, come talk to us afterwards and we can share the code and prep func or tab pie functions that will help you get up and running with this at scale. And if this problem, right, addresses without latitude and longs, uh, is something that you're struggling with, come talk to us. We're really excited about testing this out with as many folks as we can to get feedback on the process and the usability and hopefully making this like a more official feature function in Tableau. All right, third and final Mapbox tool I'm going to talk about is isochrones. So think about this, right? If I left my office in San Francisco and I traveled for 30 minutes in any direction, I would start to define this like accessible polygon of all of the places that I can reach in a given time. 
And map makers call this kind of visualization an isochrone. So iso meaning same and crone meaning time, same time. And at Mapbox, we think a lot about this in terms of time and how you travel. So whether you're driving or walking or biking, we support all three of those different modalities. And it's not just about calculating how far you can travel as the crow flies, right? Because that's useful, but only to a certain extent. Um, more concretely, we're interested in like, how far can I get along a road network uh, within this amount of time? So here I'm specifically seeing I can get to like the outer mission area of San Francisco on my bike if I only have 30 minutes. And they can be used to solve all kinds of problems, like the important age-old problem, where shall we meet for a drink? Um, my teammate Brian made this cool demo that's fondly called Meet Me in the Middle. So if you Google Meet Me in the Middle map box, you will find it. So here I am, I'm staying at the Mandalay. My friend is staying at Caesars. We're both trying to walk to a bar, get together. We can use the Isochrones API to figure out what's the closest location that's equidistant to both of us and query the, the like data and sorry, the data on bars and restaurants and cafes and identify what is that place that's the most convenient spot for both of us. Keep it very fair. Um, so this is a, a fun example that you can actually use and play around with, like drag the different starting points to wherever you are and explore in your own neighborhood. But think about being able to use this type of functionality in your day-to-day -day work, right? Answering the types of questions that you're asking Where's the closest outdoor space from this apartment complex that I'm showing to my customers? Or how many employees could reach the proposed new offices that I'm presenting if I want to make sure that everyone is only driving at max like 20 to 30 minutes to, in order to get to work? All sorts of applications uh, can be used with isochrones. But it is hard to find a more compelling example than Bridges to Prosperity. So Bridges to Prosperity, and we're lucky enough to have um, Alyssa from the organization here at the conference. Bridges to Prosperity, they work with isolated communities to create access to essential healthcare, education, and general services um, that support economic opportunities by building footbridges over impassable rivers. So they're currently working with local stakeholders over 20 countries to build 316 bridges that serve altogether more than a million people. Imundu is a seven-year-old girl living in the Gasabo district of Rwanda. And before the bridge was built, she would have to leave her house at least three hours before school started. She and her dad would walk all the way down to Nyachanga, wade through the river on foot, and then take a bike taxi back to the main road and then drive all the way north again on a motorcycle taxi in order to get to school. Three hours. And that was if they were lucky, right? If there was any sort of flooding, they probably couldn't cross the river at all and maybe she would be cut off from being able to go to school for days or weeks at a time. After the bridge was built, now Amundu walks 45 minutes to the river where she crosses this Bridges to Prosperity footbridge takes her to a road where she can catch a motorcycle taxi, which takes her up the hill to school, reducing her travel time you know, drastically, three hours to, it still takes her like an hour and a half. Um, it's no small feat to travel these distances in rural Rwanda, but that's an extra three hours a day, right? That she gets back. Um, and that makes a huge difference, not just in terms of like her day to day, uh, reducing the, the stress of the travel to get to school, but actually, you know, those extra three hours a day really add up to paint a picture of academic success and ultimately opportunity and livelihood. So in partnership with the Rwandan government, Bridges to Prosperity, they just launched a scaling program. They're gonna build 350 new footbridges over five years in Rwanda. And Bridges to Prosperity is like they're constantly seeking to increase their efficiency, right? And tell their story, extend their impact, and communicate to stakeholders and partners, like what really is the impact of these bridges that we're making. And they're getting a lot of support from the Tableau community uh, to do this. So Salesforce, Alteryx, Star Schema, Datablick, Tableau Foundation, and Mapbox are coming together to help them visualize the impact. 
This is the Bridges to Prosperity Impact Dashboard. So using the locations of planned footbridge sites, which are those red dots um, that you're seeing on the map, and the locations of schools and health centers, all of that data has been sourced from the Rwandan Statistics Agency. So Bridges to Prosperity can actually visualize what safe access to schools and health centers looks like for hundreds of isolated communi communities across the country of Rwanda. Um, so you can see, like, this dashboard is pulling spatial data from multiple different data sources, including Salesforce. Uh, so Bridges to Prosperity has their own Salesforce database, and they're using that to estimate the immediate impact of these footbridges. Using the Mapbox Isochrone API, we actually calculated an area for each bridge site that represents the distance that can be covered within a 60-minute walk before and after the bridge has been built. Uh, so those are the spidery looking lines, like the little black lines underneath the, black, the red dots. Um, those are actually individual polygons that are showing like this is the area within 60 minutes that can be reached as a result of closing the, the gap of how far people have to walk because we've put a bridge in. So we can then find the villages that intersect with those different areas, those polygons that we're creating, and use the Directions API from Mapbox to calculate the distance and duration uh, from each of these individual villages to the capital city of Kigali. So let me show you what this looks like. So again, these red dots are representing bridges, and each bridge has a Salesforce opportunity, a name, a status, and it's calculating the number of people within 60 minutes. So I'm looking at this, this little box down here. Um, 250,000 people, uh, 35 villages, 60 schools, 84 health facilities. And the box on the top right, that is the isochrone. So it's showing when we zoom in on that red dot and break out the spidery visual, um, like this is actually the the polygon that is showing the area that's accessible within that 60 minute walking distance from the bridge. And in this view, the red dots are schools. So the top right polygon is showing like all of the different routes that be, can be taken to get to the schools. And in the data breakdown below, you see that the bridge helped actually cut the distance and duration from the village to the school in half. So we're calculating like the time and mileage before and after the construction, again, using the isochrone and directions APIs from Mapbox. We've talked a lot about schools, but it's not just schools, right? Imagine, you know, the distance from the village to the Kitakama health facility is 10 miles and takes 60 minutes. That's probably, that's like a pretty, um, generous estimation. If you're having a health emergency or you're in labor, walking 10 miles uphill in the mud is very challenging. Um, so the impact of a, a bridge in this scenario helps cut the distance from 10 miles to 3 miles and means that people can access that health facility by walking a mere 20 minutes. So what we're expecting to happen over time, what we're seeing here, so this is a view in OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is one of the underlying data sources that helps power Mapbox. And what we're gonna do is, as more bridges are completed, we'll actually connect those individual ways or the lines, and that's what this yellow um, dotted line is, connecting the bridge sites to the existing Rwandan road network. And what the effect of this will be, we'll actually get to see the isochrone area grow, right? So those, those polygons we're, we're showing like, this is the 60 minute area that's accessible currently from the village. Once we connect those lines, uh, as we see here, like the, the area that's accessible will increase over time. So we'll be able to visualize and report, we being Bridges to Prosperity, um, the distances traveled and the time it actually takes to, go, to get to those destinations. And cool milestone, the team added their first way in OpenStreetMap last week. So this work is already in progress. So again, thinking like as they plan for this global scaling strategy, right? 
the work that will, the work specifically in this Tableau dashboard will help support all of these conversations about scaling with local partners, governments, um, folks who are interested in investing in pedestrian infrastructure that's supporting last mile communities. And it will allow the organization to visualize not only where barriers exist, um, but also work more effectively with their different partners to help address those gaps. So, example, like there's an organization that supports youth education. They really want to identify what are the rural communities where kids run the risk of not of dropping out of school early or of not making it to school because they have all of these transportation barriers. So being able to look at a dashboard like this and identify what are those vulnerable communities and how can we help prioritize reducing some of those transport barriers. So I would invite you to participate in a very exciting initiative that we're putting on at TC. So we're working to build a new bridge in Rwanda on behalf of the Tableau community. Um, if 10,000 people give $6 or if 5,000 people give $12, we can cover the cost of an entire bridge that will open up access for thousands of people in Rwanda. So hopefully, rather than spending, this is the last day of this conference, rather than spending your last $12 on the slot machines, maybe consider donating to this cause. Um, yeah, so you can head to this link and do your part. And to reiterate, right, this customer example they're creating routes so they can actually see how much impact their prospective bridge could have. Um, but for your own day-to-day -day business, the same routing function applies to retail site selection, healthcare companies looking at, you know, where should we place our new facility or how accessible is our new facility, advertising agencies working to place campaigns around points of interest or specific zip codes. You can use isochrones to answer all of these different questions. So, this example can really be extended to whatever industry you're working in in your day to day. So if this is something that you're interested in doing, um, we would love to talk to you about it. Uh, there are a couple different ways that you can extend the Mapbox tools, Alteryx, and Tableau to actually do this today. So come find us after this presentation. We'll be at the booth this afternoon. Um, we'd love to walk through how we can get you up and running with a test of this. All right, so to recap, I talked about my favorite Tableau map features, satellite maps, layer toggling, admin data. Uh, we talked about Atlas for offline maps, for about geocoding for enriching your data with additional latitude and longitude information, and isochrones as a powerful tool for helping identify what are those accessible areas, whether that's a tool for a real estate agency, a bank, or an incredible organization in rural Rwanda. What we're looking at here, so Alan, thank you so much, is handing out these postcards which have an access code for a very snazzy custom map style um, celebrating the fabulous Las Vegas um, that's exclusive for TC attendees. So you can use the code to sign up for a free Mapbox Studio account. This custom style will be included in the account and then you can use your access tokens to start playing around with the different features and tools that we highlighted today. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback as you're exploring these and also let us know, are there other ways that you're looking to use maps, location services in Tableau, outside of Tableau? We are here to talk about it. So yes, please do not also forget to complete the session survey. And thank you very much. <laughs>